Um, hi guys, how's it going? Um, I'm gonna have to excuse my voice, I'm a little bit sick. I got sick at a New Year's party. Classic. But I still wanted to do a tutorial for you guys on this candle shader that I made. Um, I needed some candles for a scene that I was doing and I just wasn't super happy with anything that I found <laughs> online and I think it's a pretty good good one and so I thought I'd show you guys how to do it. So first thing we're going to do is we are gonna make, we're gonna make sure all our doodads are on again, we're gonna make a UV sphere. We're gonna scale it way down, way, 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 way down. We're gonna bring it up a bit, scale it down a tiny bit more. And then we're gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna hit one so I can just grab the very, very top vertex. Yeah, that one. And with proportional editing enabled, I'm gonna bring it and bring it up. Um, so it kind of looks like a kind of looks like a candle. Uh, yeah, let's do let's do that. Okay, and the second thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna hit Alt Z to go into um, X-ray mode. X-ray mode. I'm gonna grab the bottom vertice and I'm gonna move that up as well. Kind of like kind of like that. Okay, sweet. Looks uh, looks great. Uh, I'm gonna go back into, actually I'm gonna go into inter-rendered mode. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you use cycles for this. Uh, I tried using EV, I'll just show you real quick. So you can see like, I got, I got this flame going here and it's, uh, it just like doesn't, it works at certain distances, like kinda, but also not really. I'll show a few renders that I did in EV. Um, that's like literally the best I could do. It looks weird and awful and it's super not flexible, so just, I, I'm mentioning it just because it's weird and I've never come across that. I don't know if Eevee just has a problem with small small volumes, but uh, yeah, just use cycles. Anyway, now in rendered mode, we're going to select our, our object. We're going to make a new material. I'm going to call it Kundlshder. Um, okay, we are going to delete the principled bizdiff. Um, I'm going to put in a gradient texture. And we'll just put that right into the surface for now. And then we're going to change that to spherical. So now, since I have node wrangler enabled, I'm going to hit control T and I'll bring up the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Um, and we're going to keep it generated and we're just going to move the location um, from zero to negative 0.5, negative 0.5. And then on the Z, negative 0.25. Just want to go down a tiny bit. Okay, and now we are going to add the principled volume in there and instead of putting it having it go into the color attribute we're going to bring it into the emission strength we're also going to turn the density all the way down um and now we can't really see it for some reason so we're also just going to add a math node and multiply multiply it all by let's do like 400 okay sick and why doesn't that work oh i'm a dummy because it's going to the surface oh you know what in between this gradient texture and the multiply we're going to add a color ramp and we're just gonna kinda bring that down. Yeah, somewhere like there. I'm actually gonna change from linear to ease and that just kinda gives it a little bit more na of a natural fall off. And yeah, as you can see, since we're using the generated texture coordinates, the the gradient, the sphere of the gradient kinda follows the contours of the, of the mesh that we made. So we have this nice, um, you kinda, you see that in a candle when you, when you look at candles. Does this one actually have it? Maybe it was a bad example. Uh, like kind of, kind of in there, you can see it a bit. All right, sick. So this is starting to look like a candle, but it looks a little too perfect. It is a perfect, perfect little little sphere inside of a inside of a sphere. So we gotta we gotta gum it up a bit. So the way we are going to do that is by adding a noise texture, and that we are going to mix with the gradient texture with the node wrangler. I'm gonna do Control Shift right click to make a little happy little mix node. And then that we are gonna put into the into the color ramp. Now it looks a little too a little too crazy right now, so we are going to change the scale down to I think I have like 2.4. Detail we're gonna bring down to like 0.4 and then roughness bring all the way down. And then instead of this mixing at 0.5, we're gonna we're gonna bring it down to like 0.2. All right, and to make this animate, hit Control T on the noise distortion to bring up the texture coordinates and the mapping nodes. And we're just gonna take the Z location. We're gonna hover over it. I'm gonna make sure it's uh, it's selected. Hover over the Z. Hit I to insert a keyframe. So I found that about one one meter of location change per 80 frames is good. Um, is good for me. So I'm going to I'm gonna move this over to frame 80. 
And then I'm gonna go hit one in the Z area of the mapping node and hit I to insert another keyframe. And as you can see in our graph editor, we we have that change, but it just uh, it just stops at a certain point and then just stays there. So we're just gonna we're gonna select all of that Shift E linear extrapolation and it'll just kind of keep going. But now that we're at this point. It's just gonna it's gonna have like these changes at a very very steady rate, and we kind of wanna we kind of wanna gum it up a bit. We want it to look a little bit more more organic and like it's dancing with the tiny little turbulences of the of the air in the room. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on one of the keyframes. We're gonna add a modifier. Um, we're gonna do a noise one, and we're just gonna scale this up to like twenty something. And as you can see, it still goes up the mapping node. It just kind of takes a, it looks like the stock market now. It just kind of goes up and down, but slowly goes up. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the the gist the gist of the start of it. So let's move on to onto coloring this thing. All right, so we are going to add yet another uh, gradient texture. This time we're going to keep it linear, and we're going to have the factor going into. Well, let's first let's just have it going in the surface. See what we're working with. So yeah, as you can see, it goes from zero on this one side and goes all the way up to one on this side. However, we want to go from zero to one, bottom to top. And so we are going to, if my computer feels like working, hit control T on the gradient texture and on the Y rotation, we're gonna just flip that 90 degrees and zero to one, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna go bring that from the surface to the to the emission color. Okay, now that that gradient texture is in the emission color, um, we're gonna make another color ramp. And uh, yeah, this kind of where it gets fun. We're gonna add four four of these, I think, and we're gonna space them. We're just gonna distribute them evenly. Um, this first bottom one, we're gonna we're gonna make it blue because as you can see, it kind of starts off nice and blue down here with like the the really hot flames um, when it initially ignites and then next we're gonna we're gonna kind of go to like a uh, I don't know I guess kind of like a like a yellow a yellow I don't know let's kind of look at this for a second so it goes it looks like it's blue yellow white and then kind of goes red which makes sense that's kind of like what happens to to flames as they like blue is really really hot and red is the the cooler like the coolest that flames really get so we're gonna kind of kind of try and replicate that a little bit so yeah we have a dark yellow over here and then these are just kind of gonna be be normal white and these ones are gonna go a little bit to the to the reddish part of the spectrum since this gradient texture is following this entire the entire length of this whole mesh um, we gotta kind of crush these a little bit to to make the the color ramp like this red one right now you see it's not we're not doing anything with it because it's outside the bounds of that the the texture that kind of defines where the where the where the emission is so we're just going to bring these down a little bit and this red one is just going to be very very we're probably going to probably going to drop the saturation on this one that seems like a little a little crazy and then just because candles, like it's probably it probably is like really white, but uh, I want to bring in a little bit yellow. That kind of looks cool. I don't know. Every time I've made a few of these just to just to practice for this tutorial, and every single time they turn out a little bit different. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think that looks okay. Let's let's maybe change this from like linear to to ease. Also, B oh B spline looks good. That looks really good actually. I kind of like that. Let's kind of jack the emission strength a little bit more. Let's maybe go up to 600. Um, cool. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks okay. Now, if we want to light a scene with this candle, it's uh it's not really going to do us a lot of favors to jack this up to, you know, something something crazy cuz you can see like Cycles and the denoiser is having a really really hard time with that like it's really hate, gonna hate that and also look our candle looks uh, looks like garbage so um, Obviously we are going to we're gonna fudge it a little bit. I'm gonna add a light and just add a little a little point light um, In the light settings. I'm gonna bring the power way down. I'm also gonna bring the radius way 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 down 
something like that. It's still good to keep it a little bit big because the bigger it is, the easier it is for cycles to, to render the light. We're gonna bring this still down a bit more and we're just gonna kind of bring it into that like orangish yellow texture that that gave the middle part of that that candle. Cool. And then to kind of make this flicker with to make it flicker with the with the candle, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna it's gonna look a little bit more natural and just light. That never never changes. Um, we are gonna keyframe the power part here and in the in the graph editor. Where is that anyway? Graph editor, shift F6. Um, once again, we are just gonna add a, uh, a noise modifier. And then we're just gonna bring the scale up to the same scale that we, we gave the, the Z location data, like 20 something. But we also gotta bring the strength down because as you can see, it's the values are dipping below zero here, which makes it go completely off, which is not what we want. So let's bring the strength down to like, it's just going to be very, very subtle. Maybe a little bit more than that. Something, something cool that you can do with, with these that um, just add some variance. Like if you have a ton of candles in your scene, not all of them are going to be perfectly well lit. You probably know this from using candles, being a human being and lighting candles. Um, some of them go really, really dim. Some of them go really, really long. Um, I'll just show you how to do the, how to kind of do a dim, more dim mode. So I'll just copy paste this one over here, um, make it its own material. Um, I found that the easiest way to do it is just with the, the color ramp that's going into the emission color. Because all you have to do is really change this color, bring it down to zero. It just kind of hides any part of that gradient texture. And that's just kind of at like very low very low burning, you know? Obviously, if you have a ton of candles in the scene, also what you'd want to do is offset that Z, that Z location. So yeah, if you got a bunch of these, you got the candles going, they're all identical. And so you're gonna want to like grab that, that mapping node um, and just kind of change the, make this its own material, change the offset, maybe change the phase, why not? So yeah, brand new texture, change the offset a whole bunch. Move it like way in the other direction. I'm gonna grab this one, uh, new material, or copy the material, whatever, change the offset to some random number. And so you can see now, they're all doing something, doing something a little different. Uh, hey, Chris from Christmas Future here. I cut out all the parts where I was getting frustrated that all the flames were looking very similar in their shape. Um, and I realized in editing that that is because I'm only changing the noise modifier. Um, the line is still following like a pretty, pretty similar trajectory along the, the Z location of the mapping node for the, for the noise texture. Um, and so if you want, if you want the candles to actually look quite different, what you gotta do is go into the graph editor and, uh, just, uh, select the, hit L to select the, the line. G and just like move it somewhere else, move it anywhere else, and then it will uh, it'll be it'll be different from the from the other candles. Okay, and I only really want to cover the the candle flame uh, shading, but um, well, I'll just show you how to make a candle really quick because it's uh, it's really not that hard. Psych, I'm actually not going to show you how to make a candle in this video. I'm going to make an unlisted second video because my sick brain got very rambly and it made this tutorial like 20 minutes longer than it need to be. Um, and it was only supposed to be a short video anyway. So um, yeah, click the link in the description if you want to learn how to make the the like candlestick part of a candle and do a little bit of sculpting on that and uh, um, and a little bit of uh, shading, which with like subsurface to just uh, make it look like a candle and a wick. And there's, it's like pretty good, but it's just long and rambly and not the main part of this video. Um, but yeah, I hope you like this uh, this tutorial. And uh, I'm actually trying to make a go of the of the YouTube thing now. So um, if you want to subscribe, if you like the video, then please do that or like it. Um, yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay, okay, okay. Come on in. Yeah. Meow. Okay. Oh my goodness, baby. <laughs> You want to say hi to hi to everyone on YouTube? Give them a hello in the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me finish the tutorial. Okay.